Hey everyone, how's it going? So it might not surprise you to learn that Kadabra is my favorite Pokemon. Partially because it's really, really good. And its pre-evolved form Abra is also pretty good, but not quite as good as Kadabra. So looking at its stats, I mean we got a ton of special attack, a ton of speed, not much of anything else, but those are really the two most important stats. The problem is that Abra doesn't learn any moves via level up. So, if we want to beat the entirety of Pokemon Crystal with just an Abra, we're going to need to get through a large portion of the game with struggle. And that is a struggle. Thankfully, unlike Red and Blue, where I already did this run, the first gym leader isn't rock type and struggle isn't actually a normal move. So, you might think that Faulkner won't be so bad. I mean, I did level up a ton before I attempted him the first time. Well, he leads with Pidgey, and Pidgey does know Mud Slap, but thankfully it goes for Tackle. Now, Struggle is a base 50 power move, and it's going to be a 3 AKO, but Pidgey misses with one Tackle, which is only a 5% chance. That's going to make this possibly a first try victory. We do have Berry equipped, giving us 10 more HP, and just barely, we actually beat Faulkner on our very first attempt. So, let me explain a little more about what's going on. Struggle, like I mentioned, is a base 50 power move. It is typeless. It is a physical move, though, so it doesn't use Abra's amazing special. It also does deal back recoil damage, but not nearly as much as Generation 1. Actually, it deals back half the amount of damage of Generation 1. Every time we use Struggle, a quarter of the damage we deal is dealt back to us, which isn't great, but it's better than half the damage, which is what it was in Red and Blue. So, you might think, oh, the next gym leader is Bugsy. Bugsy? Bug Pokemon? Those are terrible. And normally you'd be correct, but this is not normal, this is Abra. And with Abra, well, let me just show you. This goes really poorly. So, at first it's fine. Bugsy leads with Metapod, and while Metapod can lower my speed, what is a big deal is Scyther's Fury Cutter. It does a ton of damage. I mean, that was a crit, but... That would have done a lot, and what's this going to be, a 6-7 hit KO? There is no way. Fury Cutter starts really weak. I think it's only 10 base power, but it doubles every turn. That was 10. That was how much, because Scyther has a lot of attack, and Abra has, like, no defense. So what do we do? I've actually defeated every single trainer that I possibly can, and you get stuck at this point, like with Generation 1 Brock. You cannot pass through Ilex Forest until you have Cut, and you can't get Cut until you defeat Bugsy. Well, there is actually one trainer I can defeat, but I don't think they're going to be any easier than Bugsy was himself. Rival 2 leads with Ghastly. Now, Struggle is typeless, so it will hit Ghastly. However, Zubat has Bite and Leech Life, both of which are super effective. But what's worse is that I picked for my rival, Bayleaf. Now, Bayleaf is really, really, really bulky. And if I wanted to make things easier on myself, I would have had the rival get Totodile because then it would be stuck as Totodile. But no, that's not how we do things on this channel. I gave the rival Bayleaf, and this is probably going to be the hardest rival battle. And yeah, it's not looking any better Okay, well, it's looking a little better than Bugsy, since I knocked out two Pokemon as opposed to one. But other than just sit here and do nothing, or potentially level up against wild Pokemon, I don't really see what else I can do here. You might be wondering, does Abra get any TM moves? Well, yes, Abra gets a ton of TM moves. But none of those moves are accessible right now. In fact, the very first one is just beyond the bush we need to cut down, if... Abra could learn Swift, that would probably be kind of helpful, since it would be a base 60 power move and we wouldn't have to worry about recoil, which probably does add up in a very close battle, which it seems like it's going to be. And because of all this, it seems like we're in for a very, very tedious next few minutes, hours, god. But hold on a minute, might as well battle Rival 2, gain some experience points. Ghastly thankfully is a 2 hit KO, which is really good. I'd love for Zubat to be a 2 KO, but we're not close, and thankfully Supersonic misses. 
That crit really sucks. I still have berries, and you can get infinite berries. I can talk about that in a second. Bayleaf Razorleaf is good. We really don't want to see Reflect. We get a crit, which is great, and we actually come insanely close to knocking out Bayleaf. Now, looking at that battle critically, we probably could have knocked out the Bayleaf with one more crit. The Zubat also got a crit against us. Poison Powder could have missed. So Rival 2 seems like he's not going to be too big a deal. That's not that great a thing though, because although we can defeat Rival 2 and enter Ilex Forest, there's just a bunch of really weak Pokemon there. There's really nothing we can do until we beat Bugsy. So it's a bit of a pointless victory. Well, that's not fair. It's not pointless, but it doesn't actually achieve our main objective here, which is to get by Bugsy. Oh, and the reason why I said berries are infinite is you can just change the clock. It's annoying, but you can get as many berries as you want. They heal 10 HP, which at this point in the game, pretty good. Well, you might not be surprised to learn I did have to level up quite a bit more. Now we're at level 26. Now, the Ghastly section's not going to go much differently. The big thing here is we don't want Ghastly to use Hypnosis. It can also paralyze me with Lick. Thankfully, it doesn't happen. We knock it out. Now, against Zubat, we use Struggle. Now, you can notice it's a struggle for me right now because when you're doing something this tedious, you tend to watch YouTube videos, kind of tune out, because I had been at this for half an hour. At this point, I had been battling the rivals simply to get experience points because it's more efficient than battling wild Pokemon. And I was genuinely shocked when I looked at my screen and Bayleaf only had a sliver of health. This is the first time I have actually seen this battle in its entirety. Pretty sure I was watching baseball. But, hey, we just hit a home run. Actually, it's more like we hit a sacrifice bunt because while it feels like a victory, it really achieved nothing if we don't get our real victory, which in our case, as I mentioned now twice, is beating Bugsy. Now, I would skip ahead, but I don't think you guys understand why Abra sucks so much to use at this point in the game. Every time I go to the Pokemon Center, I need to run around and use teleport 20 times. And if you use teleport more than 20 times, then you lose HP, then you need potions, but you have no money, so you can't buy potions. It is awful. I mean, I don't mind using physical moves. We've done that already. I mean, much easier game. But man, it just really takes such a long time. And that's why just losing to the rival again and again, which is something I would normally do right away, was actually a harder choice. And it took till like level 25 when it was actually faster. So now we've made it back to Bugsy. We're a much higher level. Is it going to make a big enough difference? Well, Metapod is still going to be a 3 or 4 KO, and Tackle does decent damage. We're at 45 HP for Scyther. Now we outspeed, which is good, but Fury Cutter, which can miss, doesn't. And it's going to be, looks to be a 6 hit KO. Now, I could level up more, but there's something about Fury Cutter that makes it kind of nice. It also has a chance to miss. And if we can get enough misses, Fury Cutter goes back to being just a 10 base power move. Now it doesn't happen here, so I have to just keep resetting, but I think that's what I'm going to be doing for a little while. Unless this takes like 10-15 minutes, I just don't know how much more difference getting to level 27 or 28 is going to make. And getting from level 27 to level 28 at this point at my level takes so, so long. Oh, there's a miss. Quick attack's good. Wait. Oh, we're so close. Oh, that was close. Okay, maybe it is actually what I need to do here. So I'm actually going to keep the battle. I'm not going to reset here. You can see I have no money left because I lose so often. And I am going to level up a little bit more because that battle might be winnable one or two levels higher. So let me go do that and we'll be right back. All right, well, it took me another 20 minutes, but we are at level 28. And this is my first battle at level 28. And I'm gonna use Struggle, crit's good. So we have 57 HP, that's more than last time. That's gonna help. Struggle, Fury Cutter, that sucks. Struggle, Fury Cutter, that really sucks. We have Barry and I think we won. Four hit KO. This was the big difference and Kakuna went for Harden Actually, if it had gone for Poison Sting twice, we would have lost, but oh my god, that would have been horrible. Can you imagine after all that, 
Kakuna could have defeated us. <laughs> That's so bad. I, I actually can't believe we almost lost to Kakuna. That happens, it happens so fast, but it just clicked. All right, we didn't lose though. We did win. And winning against Bugsy means more than you think. Because we're not only gonna be able to get TM2 Headbutt if we want, which we don't, we're also gonna be able to get some of the most overpowered TMs ever, at least for Abra. And this is why Kadabra was such a favorite of mine growing up. You see, in the Goldenrod Pokemon, we can get a bunch of TMs. Like I said, Headbutt, don't need that. Sweet Scent, Fury Cutter, no. Those aren't important. We can also sell Pokeballs, we don't need those. But what we do need are the Elemental Punches. Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch. Nowadays, these are typically Move Tutor moves, and nowadays, these are physical moves. And that's a big problem for Abra with its awful physical attack. I mean, I can't even imagine playing through a game as difficult as Gold and Silver with Abra and only physical moves. I mean, Red and Blue, okay, but that's not gonna be a thing here. Thankfully, in this game, they're special moves. And although we're not gonna get access to Psychic until after the Elite Four, with the type coverage of Fire, Ice, and Electric, and a high special attack, I actually think we're gonna roll through the gym leaders. Which, after how long it took me to defeat Bugsy, I feel like we've been owed that. We also have Charcoal to make Fire Punch stronger. So let's skip ahead and see how Whitney is. A lot of people find Whitney to be one of the toughest gym leaders at this point of the game. Let's see if Abra feels the same. Whitney leads off with Clefairy, and Clefairy can be really annoying. We go for Fire Punch and oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, okay. Um, that went way better than I thought it would. Um, yeah. So we're significantly over leveled, and we have Abra special attack. This might be a little bit easier than I was thinking it would be. Like I thought it would be easy. Morty though, ghost type. We are weak to ghost type moves, even though Gengar's physical attack isn't great. Maybe this battle will be difficult, hopefully. I really don't want to run where all the difficulties the first two gyms, and then we just absolutely steamroll through the entire game. All right, so here's Morty. He leads with Ghastly. I go for, uh-oh. Okay, that's just Ghastly though. Haunter, oh. Uh, Gengar, Gengar is very strong. Oh. Well, that technically was a crit. Um. Did I say that Morty was going to be tough? We don't have any psychic moves. Chuck, high physical attack. That's a really big deal. I think Chuck is going to be what gets us stuck. All right, here goes Chuck. Primate. We're not that over leveled. Oh, well, Leer. Okay, now our defense is even worse. And, oh, see, it paralyzed and we got luck. I mean, if that hit, it probably would have knocked me out. So, like, we almost lost. Please keep watching. I, I promise this challenge is going to get better. There, there's no way it stays this easy the whole time. Jasmine, I actually don't have high hopes for her. I mean, Magnemite, we're going to knock out. And we're not that over-leveled anymore. One thing about... Well, let's actually see how Steelix goes. Fire Punch? Oh. Well, one thing about Gold, Silver, Crystal that makes it not the most fun to challenge run is there are so many trainers that are either mandatory or they spin around, making them very hard to avoid. And this has the effect in a solo run, which to be fair, I don't think they really designed the game around, that your Pokemon is insanely overleveled. And especially when you consider how overleveled we needed to be to be Bugsy, we can kind of see a snowball effect. Eventually, it balances out, but we only have two gym leaders left in Johto before the Elite Four, who probably will actually be difficult. Yeah, that was another pun, will, in the Elite Four. Anyway, here's Price. All right, so Price leads with Seal. We have Thunder Punch. That's going to be super effective. Next comes out Dugong. We have Thunder Punch. That's going to be super effective. In fact, Price is weaker than Jasmine. Not sure why he's considered to be the seventh gym leader. I don't know why I even narrated that. That was pretty obvious that was going to happen. However, next we have Claire. And although she has three Dragonair, Kingdra might prove to be pretty difficult. Let's see. 
All right, so like we mentioned before, a bunch of side quest stuff. So we're at level 51. And that means we're going to outspeed and one-shot the three Dragonair. We kind of knew that before, but there are so many Team Rocket grunts we need to defeat. This was inevitable. But now, see? Oh. Well, that's anticlimactic. Unfortunately, Kindra didn't cooperate and use Hyper Beam and turn this into potentially a difficult battle. We haven't actually lost a battle since Bugsy. That's a nice little win streak. But the Elite Four are quite a step up in difficulty. In fact, some challenge runners consider the Elite Four the end of the game. I don't. We're going to have to beat Red. And Red is always a challenge. It's part of why Gold and Silver, while I enjoyed them as a kid, I don't enjoy them as much as other games because of the difficulty curve. However, they are super nostalgic to me, so I will still make videos in Gold, Silver, Crystal. And speaking of Gold, Silver, Crystal, one of the best sections is the Elite Four. It's pretty tough. And let's see if our Abra, with its three elemental punches, is enough. All right, the first Elite Four member is Will, and you'll notice I don't have Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball in Gold and Silver is a physical move. So we're gonna stick with Thunder Punch for the two Zatu. Then for Jinx, we're gonna switch to Fire Punch. We're still pretty overleveled. There's a lot of trainers on the way to Elite Four. Fire Punch against Executor. And then finally for Slowbro, we have Thunder Punch. Will was pretty easy. I didn't expect Will to be difficult because his best moves are Psychic moves. So we can move on to Koga, who if we had Psychic would be really bad, but because we don't, might be better. Eridos though is bug type, so Fire Punch is going to knock it out. Fortress is double weak to Fire Punch, no need to worry. Venomoth also weak to Fire Punch, but Muck isn't weak to any of my moves. So it goes for Minimize, it's gonna be a three KO, it goes for Toxic, I miss, Sludge Bomb, Thunder Punch, this is gonna be really close actually. Do we lose? We do! For the first time since Bugsy, Abra has lost a battle. See, I told you guys it wasn't gonna be a walk in the park. There are still difficult trainers ahead. Now, normally in these runs, I save between Elite Four members, which I didn't do this time, which I should have probably done. But this time versus Koga, things go a heck of a lot better. Against Venomoth, we're gonna use Fire Punch. And then against Muck, we're gonna use Fire Punch, Minimize, Fire Punch, Sludge Bomb, and this time we're not poisoned, so that Crobat can't go for Quick Attack because it'll only go for Quick Attack if it'll one-shot. Even if it did, it wasn't going to knock us out because it wouldn't one-shot. And so we win. Hooray. Now, Bruno actually could be a little difficult. I know that sounds weird, but physical moves are Abra's biggest weakness other than the Dark-type moves, which are next. Anyway, Hitmontop, we're going to go for Fire Punch. It does half. Don't forget... The Hitmons actually have really, really good special defense. Onyx doesn't. It's going to get one shot by Ice Punch. But that's the only super easy Pokemon. Fire Punch doesn't do half. Rock Slide does a ton. We lose. Yeah, we lose. We're going to have to level up a little bit more. There really aren't any better TMs. Abra doesn't get a ton of great special moves. So you can see me resetting here. So I'm not certain yet. And after thinking about it, I decided I am going to level up. But rather than waste my time, there are some rare candies available in the overworld. And my hope is by using these rare candies, combined with the levels we have gained from defeating the Elite Four at level 61, we should theoretically, you can notice I'm not saving here, so I am actually trying to beat them consecutively, which again, I don't have to do for this challenge. It's not my red and blue challenge. But I'm thinking this is going to be enough. Fire Punch, well, the crit, we knew if we got a crit, we'd knock it out. But that's big, because Dig did quite a bit of damage to us. Hitmonlee, Fire Punch, does quite a lot. Double Kick doesn't, we knock it out. Machamp is the one I'm scared of, and we get a crit. But that means it's going to be a 3 a KO, and I went for Thunder Punch, and that's a... Oh, never mind. We got a bad range on the first one, a good range on the second one, and thankfully, Mock Punch just doesn't do enough so level 61 was actually perfect for defeating bruno but i wasn't lying when i said bruno is going to be one of the tougher ones but i also think karen is going to be rather difficult i mean karen's dark type we don't have anything super effective 
are we going to be able to defeat our Pokemon before they just troll us? And the biggest troll is Umbreon. Ice Punch, Sand Attack thankfully has a 25% chance to miss in this game, so we're able to knock it out with just one Faint Attack. Murkrow is weak to Ice Punch, I forgot to use an Elixir, that's annoying. I have to go for Thunder Punch, I misclick and go for Ice Punch, and had I gone for Thunder Punch, I probably would have won. That's annoying, a really, really silly misclick on my part, so we're going to have to go through the Elite Four again. And the question is, is it consistent enough that I'm going to make it right back to Karen, or am I going to lose somewhere to Koga or Bruna? Well, Koga went pretty well, but as you can tell by the fact you're watching a Bruno battle, that one didn't go so well. This time, we get hit with Dig. And remember, last time we only had like 5 HP to spare. So, now what's going to happen once we got hit, we have 75 HP for Hitmonlee and Machamp. And Hitmonlee doesn't go for double kick, it goes for high jump kick. We have not nearly enough HP for Machamp, and if it doesn't miss, which it didn't, we lose. So Bruno is actually being a legitimate obstacle here. If we had Psychic, which is available in Saffron City again, this would be a total joke. But part of the fun of this run is it takes so long to get Psychic that we have to use Abra, even though we're not using physical moves, we're still not using its absolute best move. And Kadabra would just learn Psychic via level up, which is why I can't do this challenge with Kadabra. I actually do speed runs with Kadabra because although it's not optimal, it is definitely possible to beat this entire game, even with minimum battles with Kadabra. Not easily, mind you, but relatively pain-free. I'm hoping I don't have to level up anymore. I'm just going to skip ahead to Bruno once again. And it's not looking great. I mean, if things went the same as our winning battle, we're going to lose. And that's, again, if things went the exact same. If we get a miss, we could win. We don't. So we're at 40 HP for the two Hitmons. We need a crit. We don't get it. And high jump kick knocks out Abra. Protect, by the way. I know what you're thinking. Not available until Celadon. What about hidden power? I checked it. It was hidden power bug. That's a physical move and unhelpful versus fighting types. So if you wonder why I'm not doing certain things, it's either a physical move, it's not available to later in the game, or it's hidden power bug. I anticipate those are going to be asked, so I figure I would answer those questions. So I guess the thing you're wondering is, what do I do? Do I just level up? Yeah, I do. And what I do is I just not reset after I lost the Elite Four, and I got a crit against Hitmontop. So that's really good. We have full HP now for Hitmonlee. We're still not going to one-shot, although we're doing quite a lot. If we level up even more, we will. But you gain so much experience points from defeating Koga and Will. If we just didn't reset and took all those losses and our experience points, we'd have more than enough. And thankfully, Machamp goes for Cross Chop. Even if it hit, we would have survived. So for the second time, we make it back to Karen. Now, remember last time a misclick probably cost me the win. So I think we have this, but we also got lucky with a sand attack miss. So that's something to keep in mind. Fire punch and there's the sand attack hit. It's still not doing two hits and we're confused now. So that's probably going to be a problem. Murkrow we knock out with thunder punch, but the big problem is Houndoom. We hit ourselves in confusion, crunch, and once again, bad luck costs us. I feel so annoyed that I misclicked with Thunder Punch. I think we might have been able to beat the entire Elite Four if I just, just didn't do that. Ugh, I'm so annoyed, but we'll get it, we'll get it. Before we battle Karen though, is Bruno consistent? So I didn't level up anymore, I'm still at level 67, and we get a crit with Dig. So that's not good, and by we get a crit, I mean a crit against us, you know what I meant. Anywho. Hitmonlee, still not a one-shot, and with 51 HP, it looks like this battle is going to be a loss. Mock Punch, I mean, if Machamp hits us with anything, we lose. We need a crit. We got the crit. So, we've made it back to Karen on consecutive attempts. The question I have, is this beatable without leveling up even more? We do have, Sand Attack sucks, but... I'm happy with a two-shot against Umbreon. We're not confused this time. But do we hit with Thunder Punch? Yes. 
and we crit, we're gonna win. Gengar is a little scary. It goes for Curse, though, and that's actually really scary, but Vileplume is the last Pokemon, and so we don't even have to worry about Curse. We're almost at a nice level, and we have really good attacks against all of Lance's Pokemon. We might have been able to do this at an earlier level. I'm gonna switch Charcoal, which we've had on since Azalea Town, for Nevermelt Ice. Are we gonna beat Lance in just one attempt? That would be nice. So we go for Thunder Punch. I forgot to Elixir again. One down. Dragonite, I go for Ice Punch. Easy. Two down. We're 20 levels higher. Another Ice Punch. Three down. Aerodactyl doesn't outspeed. Ice Punch knocks it out. Charizard, we have to go for Thunder Punch. It knocks it out. And we could have done this earlier. It's not the end of the game anyway, so not a big deal. Nice. What a perfect level to end a perfect run. And now we get to move on to Kanto. And usually I like to show a montage of the Kanto gym leaders just because they are gym leaders, but they're never difficult, ever. I mean, we're gonna get psychic. I might as well show them just to show them, but if I lose to any of these gym leaders, it's because I closed my eyes and started pressing buttons at random. I mean, we're gonna have the same moveset plus Psychic. All right, Surge, you're up first. So you get to see me use Psychic. You can also notice I used a PP up with Fire Punch because it was helpful for the Elite Four. And I just wanna mention, I did beat the Elite Four without saving in between, which in impossible challenges, although calling this that, seems really disingenuous at this point. Um, anyway, sorry, we're gonna skip ahead to the next gym leader. I'll keep talking. Now, I did think without Psychic, things would be a little tougher, especially Karen, and it just shows you just how good Abra is. Now, it is a glass cannon. When it gets hit, as we showed with the Bruno battles, we can lose, and we lost a lot to Bruno. But at this point, we're so overleveled, and we have Psychic, like, what's gonna defeat us? And these are Gen 1 gyms, there's no Dark Pokemon here. Dark is definitely the scariest type, other than maybe Normal, because of their high special defense if it's something like Snorlax which is coming up, but not for a while. Janine, I mean, is there any point in saying anything? She has poison Pokemon. We use Psychic a few times. Now Janine is defeated. Sabrina is a little more difficult because I can't just use Psychic, but because of the weird difficulty curve, although it didn't one-shot Espeon, so that's kind of cool, and we were hit with Sand Attack, and it doesn't one-shot Mr. Mime, but even though we start missing against Alakazam, there's nothing Sabrina's Pokemon can really do to us. And remember, burn in Gen 2 is 1 8 not 1 16th, so the burn actually knocks out Alakazam. In HeartGold SoulSilver, the Kanto Gym Leaders are at higher level, and maybe we'll redo this challenge in HeartGold SoulSilver. I just have so much more nostalgia for the originals, and this is technically Crystal, but this challenge would be far, far more difficult in a game without elemental punches, and in a game where the AI is better, and in a game where the gym leaders are harder. Anyway, we're almost done, I promise. And then we get to the actual difficult gym leader, Blue, and then Red, which might be really, really tough. We're actually under-leveled. All right, Misty comes next. She has a Golduck. We're gonna go for Thunder Punch. Actually, we're just gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna use Thunder Punch. Quagsire, I'm gonna use Psychic. The one question I guess I have is whether Lapras, which is pretty tanky, tanks Psychic. That would be pretty cool. And I'm not even gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for Thunder Punch because why waste time? I guess at this point I have to show Brock and Blaine, but I one shot every single one of Brock's Pokemon. And unsurprisingly, the same thing happens to Blaine. Now, Blue has pretty much the same team he has as Champion in Gen 1, varied types, but still under leveled. So this might be really easy or this might be deceptively difficult. But finally, I'm excited to find out because it's not a foregone conclusion. Just like in the champion battle, he leads off with Pidgeot, but Thunder Punch is enough to knock it out. One down. Alakazam is probably gonna survive a Fire Punch. Psychic doesn't lower special defense, so that's two down. Ride on, Ice Punch wouldn't be good in later gens, but with a special attacking Ice Punch, that's three down. Thunder Punch, more than enough for Gyarados. Executor, we can use Fire or Ice. I still have never Melt Ice equipped, so I go for Ice Punch. Crit probably mattered. And then Extreme Speed, we're actually gonna lose. Oh no, we're not. Psychic One-Shot, nice. And that 
our 16 gems. And now we get the hardest battle yet, the battle versus red. We're under leveled. Snorlax is gonna be scary. They're all gonna be scary. We might actually have to do a little bit of leveling up for the first time since the Elite Four. But I'm excited. This is gonna be an epic final battle. Let's go. All right, Red leads with his Pikachu and we go for Psychic. It does one shot despite the fact we're actually at a lower level. Fire Punch unsurprisingly doesn't do all that much, but Espeon decides to go for Reflect, which is completely useless. And then we get a lucky crit. So that's gonna knock out Espeon, two down. But this is the one I'm worried about, Snorlax. Psychic does like nothing? <laughs> okay, okay. This is gonna be, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be something. All right, I do have an idea. It's a bad idea, but I do have an idea. I don't really need Ice Punch anymore because we have Fire Punch and Thunder Punch. Dynamic Punch actually will handle Snorlax. I know, 50 accuracy, physical move, but it will work. So Espeon, once again, we get the Reflect, and now we're back to Snorlax. Dynamic Punch hits, it does like nothing because of Reflect, but what we want to have happen is A, no Reflect, and B, we need Snorlax to hit itself in confusion a couple times, and I think we win. And Dynamic Punch, a move I've never used before, is going to be the reason why. It might take a lot of resetting, but eventually it is going to happen. We'll go for Psychic. We one-shot Pikachu. We're still at level 75. Fire Punch, Swift is perfect. And we have leftovers from Snorlax. That's why I get the Master Ball. 93 HP. We won't need it if this works. We hit Dynamic Punch. Crit is perfect. It hits itself in confusion. I might be able to go for Psychic. Let's go. Let's go. I think we got this. I think we got this. I go for Psychic. I could have gone for Thunder Punch. That was a mistake. Uh oh Wing Attack. We do knock out Charizard, but there are two Pokemon left. We need a crit or something. There's the crit. We won. <laughs> There's the or something. We got the crit. This is going to knock out Venusaur. Let's go. But you know what? I don't actually feel all that happy. I mean, I'm happy I used Dynamic Punch and it helped me win. But like, I feel like since we won at such a low level, maybe it would be possible to do just physical moves. I mean, we did it in red and blue, but I mean, come on. It's not as if, I don't know, using modern technology, I backed up my save exactly at that point in Ilex Forest in order to see what that would look like because I worried this would be too easy. And of course, that's exactly what I did. So welcome to the second part of the video where I try to do the exact same thing but we're going to limit ourselves to physical moves, meaning Dynamic Punch is actually going to come in handy. Abra gets some interesting physical moves, and that means the Elemental Punches and Psychic are not going to be allowed. So it's going to be a totally different run, and rather than make a second video, let's get to the real challenge, because this is going to be extremely difficult, and I'm excited. In the interest of time, though, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to Whitney. Now, I decided to level up far more because we're going to need it. Headbutt is the main attack we're going to use, and we knock out Clefairy in two hits. Miltank, however, goes for rollout, but we get a critical hit flinch and then a second critical hit. So we actually get, shockingly, a first try victory versus Whitney. Normally, I would reset, but in a physical Abra challenge, I'll take it. So looking at Abra's moveset, it doesn't get too much at this point. We are going to eventually get Return, but Return, while it is 102 base power, requires us not to faint because then we'll lose friendship, and that would be bad. The other moves I can see us using, we're going to have to get by defeating Gym Leaders. But speaking of Gym Leaders, the next Gym Leader is Morty. And Morty is a Ghost-type Gym Leader, and Ghosts, well, they aren't affected by normal moves like Headbutt. So that means we're going to have to go back to struggle. And that might be, well, I already made the pun before, but you get it. Now, I didn't even mention him in the regular run because there was no point, but I'm not even able to one-shot Haunter. And it goes for Curse. 
and I think I'm gonna lose to Rival 3. And that's a bad sign, because if I'm losing to Rival 3 with just his one Haunter, well, what does that mean for me against Morty, where he has a Gengar with Shadow Ball that will surely almost knock me out, if not definitely one-shot me? I'd like to tell you that I could just level up, but I'm pretty much out of trainers to fight, and I just battled Rival 3 until I got a super lucky critical hit, and that doesn't even guarantee my victory. All that means is I have a shot, but here we have Zubat confusing me. I only have 48 HP and Bayleaf is still quite tanky. It does have Poison Powder, it has Razor Leaf which can crit, and this took me over 12 minutes at 4 times speed. That means playing this at regular speed, which I did all the time as a kid, this would have taken me 45 minutes of battling. So suffice to say, Morty is going to be really, really difficult. And even though I'm at a super high level, I don't think that's going to make too big a difference. I can battle the trainers in his gym, but aside from those trainers, since I don't yet have access to Surf, you get that by defeating Morty, it would have to be wild Pokemon in order to level up past level 41. Which is insane when you consider that Claire's best Pokemon is at level 41, but I digress. Let's battle Morty. Alright, well Morty leads with Ghastly, unsurprisingly, there's not many ghosts, and we don't knock it out, so we're gonna have to level up. Spite's fine though. Haunter, we do half, we're gonna need a critical hit because Curse is gonna be a big deal. We do less than half to Gengar, and unsurprisingly after Curse, Shadow Ball knocks us out. So I can try to battle Morty again and again and again and again and again and again, but I'm going to just tell you what I knew at the time. Oh, it's a range. That's kind of nice. I didn't know that. But this is... Oh, well, no curse. Actually, ignore what I said. This might work. Um, never mind. This is definitely not going to work. Okay, back to my original speech. We need to level up. And we might have to level up far more than I want to. But what other choice do we have? There is no TM that is going to damage Morty's Pokemon... That is physical. Abra can't learn dig. Abra can't learn rollout. It sucks, but until we get Shadow Ball, there's no great way to damage ghosts. And the way to get Shadow Ball is, of course, defeating Morty. And thankfully, Shadow Ball is physical, because that's going to help us against Psychic Pokemon too. But for now, we head back to the roots to find Tauros, Miltank, and other Pokemon. And hopefully at level 42 or 43, that's going to be enough. All right, so seven minutes, we gained a level, we bought some proteins, and we do knock out Ghastly in one hit. Haunter, however, we probably need a crit. Curse, yeah. So I'm just going to reset until we get a crit, because we can't have Curse. Well, wouldn't you believe it, in our very next battle, we knock out Ghastly still. The recoil's a big problem, but we get a Hypnosis miss, which is good. And now, do we survive Shadow Ball? That's what I need to know. Mean Look is great. Oh, that's so close. That's so close. Oh my god, I don't know what's going to happen against the last Haunter. But like, I see a pathway to victory now. But we need great AI decisions. And by great, I mean terrible AI decisions from Morty. Can Morty throw? Can he use the worst moves possible? I'm thinking that right now, that's why I'm just standing here. I'm wondering, should I level up, or should I try to get good RNG? Luckily, I'm smart and opted to level up. Nah, I'm just kidding. I battled him like a bunch more times and I never got past Gengar. So, I leveled up after that. This time we get hit by Nightshade, and that's good in that it's not Curse, but that's bad in that we don't have enough HP. So, yeah, I just have to kind of do this again and again and again. We need Hypnosis, Miss, or Crit. And we actually have more experience than I originally planned, which is good, because if we need to get to level 44, it's not going to take all that much time. I also could just lose against Morty, and if I lose against Morty, that's probably at this point more efficient, just like with Rival 2. It's more efficient just to lose against Morty. So I have Mint Berry, which is good. 77 HP, is that enough? Well, it's going to be 71, and it actually is, but with recoil damage, we knock ourselves out. 
So it's good to know this does about 70 damage, but it doesn't really help us all that much if we can't attack after the 70 damage. So it seems like the only way to beat Gengar is it using Mean Look and getting a couple of crits. We do get Hypnosis, which is pretty cool, and that gets me thinking that if we still had Mint Berry, meaning if Haunter missed with Hypnosis, there's a chance, because that would waste a turn, and then maybe it goes for Mean Look, and then maybe we win. I don't know what the odds are, RNG-wise, of that happening. And unfortunately, if we get Nightshade, I just have to reset and just keep doing this again and again and again and again. And I might have to level up again. It might help. I mean, if I level up enough, well, oh, what? Well, hold on. There's the hypnosis miss. We needed that. Are we getting hypnosis? No, we got Shadow Ball. And uh, so close. And this is why hoping for RNG sucks. I'm not going to make you sit through the 20 minutes of footage I have of me losing to Morty, but I never got past the Gengar again, so I leveled up even more. Now I'm at level 46. So 97 HP. Haunter we now one-shot, but with a crit. And this is my first battle at 46, so I don't know. Mint Berry, though, that's what we wanted. Oh my god, we just won. Are you kidding me? All that level up, all that time, and it didn't matter. We just got the insane RNG we need to win. Maybe because I'm at a higher level, the AI acts differently. I don't know, but, oh, that's frustrating. I mean, it's good. We won. That's great. But, like, oh, that's so frustrating. Two Hypnosis and the Mint Berry and a crit against Haunter. I don't want to know what the odds are of a battle that lucky, but we needed it. And now we're super, super overleveled. I don't even remember the last run when we were at level 46, but... Yeah, I mean, that's just going to be the way this goes. Because we're so high level, Return should start coming into play soon, and we do have Shadow Ball, but if we want to defeat Jasmine and Price, we're going to need Dynamic Punch, and that means we need to battle Chuck, and this time we don't have the Elemental Punches to help us deal with his high attack Pokemon. Alrighty, so we already know Chuck leads with Primeape, you've seen it already once. We go for Return, and it doesn't quite knock it out. Return, like I mentioned, high friendship, base 102 power. We get hit with Dynamic Punch, and it sucks because the move that we used to defeat Red just used to defeat me. How sad. Ironic. It's not actually ironic at all. That's not the definition of irony. Now you learned something in a Pokemon Challenge video, and it wasn't about badge boost glitch or weird ditto glitches no one ever heard of. I'm proud of myself. Anyway, the next battle, Dynamic Punch misses twice, and we win. So, we're really overleveled, and returns a really good attack. So that's good. I don't really have, like, a negative there. That's good. I do think Jasmine's going to be really, really tough. The Magnemite are going to be annoying. Don't forget, Dynamic Punch is a 50-50 attack. The thing is, if it hits, it confuses, which is a 50-50 chance that it doesn't attack. So there's a 25% chance that Dynamic Punch both hits and the Pokemon can't attack so it hits itself in confusion. So it's, it's really like an all or nothing type deal here. Okay, now I don't want to get too caught up on this, but I decided to be a little stubborn. I actually was in a Discord call with some people and they didn't think the best idea would be to battle Jasmine first. They thought it would be smarter to go and do some other stuff first. And I wanted to prove them wrong. But let me say unambiguously that this is the wrong decision. It would be much, much, much easier to go do all the Team Rocket stuff and then potentially battle Price and then come back to Jasmine. However, I know for a fact it is possible at this level. And I hope it doesn't take me too long. All right, so she leads with Magnemite. Essentially, what we need to have happen is Dynamic Punch to hit at least three times in a row. Now, as we talked about, Dynamic Punch has a 50-50 chance, making the probability math really easy. It's 50-50 on the first turn. The second turn, you just divide that by half, so it's a one in four chance. And then you just divide that by half, so it's a one in eight chance that we hit with three consecutive Dynamic Punches. Now, we thankfully know that Dynamic Punch does knock out Magnemite, but it doesn't knock out Steelix, most likely. So we're probably going to need to hit with, I don't know, maybe two or three dynamic punches. 
So that's a 1 16 or a 1 in 32 chance, which honestly isn't actually that bad. But, oh look, finally we made it to Steelix. Okay, so we missed the first one. Iron Tail doesn't one-shot, and it's going to be a 3-hit KO with Dynamic Punch. But there's a second problem. We've run out of Dynamic Punches, and unfortunately Jasmine does have Hyper Potion. So, there is a way around this. There are PP ups that I can get, but we would need to hit with all five dynamic punches, and I think Steelix has to not hit itself in confusion, so it's not in range to use the Hyper Potion. So, this could take a little while. Well, 10 minutes later, and we get one dynamic punch, we get two dynamic punches. I still don't have the PP up, which is annoying, but we get a critical hit, and it hits itself in confusion. Hyper Potion, that's okay. We missed the last dynamic punch. We're doomed, right? Wrong. I got a Mystery Berry, which is available in various parts of the game, and that will restore my power points. And thankfully, we got a miss from Iron Tail. Dynamic Punch doesn't miss, eventually. And we beat Jasmine. Should we have done this later? Yes. Was it rewarding to do it now? Also, in my opinion, yes. Alrighty, so now we've made it to Price. We have plenty of things to deal with Price's Pokemon. Return is one-shotting Seal. Dugong, I go for Dynamic Punch. We missed the first, we hit the second. Headbutt didn't do all that much. And then Piloswine, I miss, but then I hit. And it's a crit. And we're at level 52. <laughs> okay, that's already higher than any of Lance's Pokemon. So, yeah, we're really, really over-leveled. But we have seven gyms. We have to do a bunch more Team Rocket stuff, and there are tons of trainers. There is a PowerPoint up that we can get in Ice Cave if we so want it. So that's nice. But yeah, we're going to fast forward quite a bit, and I will see you at the battle with Claire, which could be really difficult, by the way. All right, so I battled every trainer I possibly can up to this point, because why not? We're headed to Elite Four. I go for return, and Thunder Wave has a 25% chance to miss in this game. It does. We knock it out. We go for return. Thunder Wave has a 25% chance to miss. It does again. This is insane luck. I do have a Paralysis Cure Berry, and we get a third consecutive Thunder Wave miss. But then I decide to be cheeky and go for Dynamic Punch, and we eventually hit even after a smoke screen. Kingdra does heal. But then we hit not one, but two consecutive returns after Smokescreen. And I honestly wasn't even planning to win this battle because to get three consecutive Thunder Wave misses is 25%. And then you divide that into four. So you get about 7.5. And then you divide that into four and you get just around a 2% chance of getting three consecutive Thunder Wave misses. Now, to be fair, we only needed two. We had a Paralysis Cure Berry, but all right, first try victory somehow. And once again, we're moving on to the Elite Four. Now, this is going to be a much more difficult Elite Four because not only don't we have Psychic like last time, we don't even have the Elemental Punches to offer good type coverage. Will once again should be good, but Koga and Bruno proved a little difficult, especially Bruno last time. And Karen, we're going to have to rely on Dynamic Punch, which, as you know, is very literally hit and miss. But only one way to find out how we do. I am definitely going to be saving between Elite Four members. Eventually, right now, I just kind of want to know what the Elite Four battles are going to look like. Will probably won't be so difficult as long as we one-shot. And we're at level 63. We one-shot the first Zatu with Shadow Ball. That's good. We don't one-shot the second one. And... Confuse Ray is really bad. We do hit, and you can see it's a range, so that's kind of cool. I hit myself in Confusion, though. Ice Punch, not great. Hit myself in Confusion, another Ice Punch. Shadow Ball should one-shot Jinx with its very bad defense. Executor, we do have Hidden Power Bug. That's double super effective, and I think it's only 50 base power. But Shadow Ball does not knock out Slowbro, and so we're going to have to do this again. So we might have to level up so that the second Zatu is not a range because otherwise it's going to be annoying but i have a feeling we're gonna to have to level up anyway so we're just going to try again one shot the first zatu one shot the second zatu albeit with a crit and this means we have more than enough hp for jinx we knock it out in one hit we're going to knock out executor and funny enough slowbro was actually the last pokemon 
So we're gonna hit it, Amnesia does nothing, and now we make it through at full health. Cool stuff, but Will was not supposed to be the difficult Elite Four member. Koga definitely will be very difficult, especially with Fortress, super high defense, and the only neutral move is Dynamic Punch. Return does not one-shot Ariados, but double team, I still hit. Now though, we have to go for a Dynamic Punch, it goes for Spikes, we hit, and it's just gonna be a three hit KO, which is not good. Shadow Ball in this generation does not do neutral, and once Fortress dips under half HP, it goes for Explosion. And you can see here I'm not starting up the game right away because I actually don't know exactly how we're gonna do this. Essentially, what I think needs to happen is we need to hit it with two consecutive Dynamic Punches, and it has to hit itself in Confusion twice, and we probably have to level up. All those things are probably going to need to occur to beat Fortress, and then we still have the Venomoth, which is super effective, although with Leech Life, which isn't very good, the Crobat, and the Muck. And remember, Muck actually defeated me the first time I did this with Special Abra. So, this is going to be fun. Now, as you notice, I did save in front of Koga. I mentioned I was going to do that. There's really no reason not to save at this point, because I don't really need much money for what's left in this run, and I'd rather get attempt after attempt after attempt, because what can happen is a defeat of Fortress, and that at least gives me an idea of how much damage I do to the rest of Koga's Pokemon. Unfortunately, I get really bad luck versus Venomoth, and there's no way we're going to withstand a Sludge Bomb. So, very likely, we're going to have to lose gain experience and just do this again and again and again until we either get the luck we need or until we get a situation that is more conducive to victories. Well, I did go through the Elite Four again and I battled Koga about 10 more times. And you know eventually we're gonna win, so how does that happen? Well, Ariados we missed once, but that's not a big deal. Dynamic Punch hits and it hits itself in confusion. Dynamic Punch crits, and that's massive. Now against Venomoth, we're at full HP. Gust does nothing. It's a two hit KO. Now we have Crobat, level 44, and it's a three hit KO. Toxic and double team. That's Koga's strat. You can see it's a range, and we do get a two hit KO, but the crit may have mattered. And Muck, thankfully, is going to be a two hit KO. It goes for Minimize, it goes for Sludge Bomb, and with just 12 HP remaining, we do get by Muck, but that was a ton of luck. That time I actually was not intending to rhyme. I'm gonna save here, because remember, Bruno was the real sticking point last time. I just wanna get to Bruno and see how we do before I start leveling up, which we're gonna have to do probably a lot. So, Dig Hits returns a two shot, which is good. Onyx, I have to go for probably Dynamic Punch, it doesn't one-shot unsurprisingly, and Earthquake does a ton of damage. We knock it out with Shadow Ball, which is neutral. Mock Punch is doing a fair bit, so we're only at 51 HP, so you know we're gonna lose here. I go for Dynamic Punch, hoping for a clutch Hidden Confusion, which I get. I then knock it out with Returns. We actually could theoretically win. We actually do win. I can't believe Return just one-shot Hitmonlee. Its special defense is much better than its defense, and we're at a higher level, so hooray! <laughs> I can't believe we did that! Karen, however, Houndoom is going to be a lot more problematic now that we have to rely on Dynamic Punch. So I go for Dynamic Punch against Umbreon. It does actually almost as much as Fire Punch did. Unfortunately, it does not hit itself in Confusion. We do knock it out, but after a Sand Attack. Now comes out Murkrow, and I miss with Return. I hit with the second one, it doesn't knock it out. So we're at only 65 HP for Houndoom. We have to hit with a move that now has less than 50% accuracy, and yeah, unsurprisingly, we lose. But I have some rare candies, and this is the perfect time to use them. I shouldn't save after I use them, because rare candies should be used at the last possible moment. I know I probably need them for red, but I just want to see after four levels how much easier this fight gets. Remember, we didn't one-shot Umbreon, and it stills doing roughly the same, but it hits itself in confusion, so that's clutch. Murkrow, we do one-shot, but with a crit, and now we need to hit. We miss. Crunch does about half. We miss again. 
Crunch does, well, doesn't knock me out. We knock out Houndoom, but I think it's too little too late. Shadow Ball does knock out Gengar, but Vileplume has Petal Dance. I go for Return, and there's Petal Dance. Honestly, really close to beating Karen, but I also want to point out that we're probably going to do this soon. Lance is going to be totally different without Ice and Thunder Punch. But that's a problem for slightly more in the future, Jeros. Alright, so... This is take three, I believe, or take four. Anyway, whatever it is, we knock out Umbreon the same way last time. Murkrow, we're gonna knock it out. And then we get to Houndoom. We just need to hit. We miss. We have HP. And we hit with Dynamic Punch. At level 70, that's more than enough to knock it out. Shadow Ball's enough to knock out Gengar. And then finally, we have Vileplume. Dynamic Punch, that's a misclick. But it hits itself in confusion. And Return's gonna knock it out. We're at level 70, and we've made it to the champion of Johto. But this is going to be really, really tough. We're not going to one-shot Lance's Pokemon. Our best move is still Return. Nothing we have is super effective against Gyarados, Dragonite, anything. So this is probably where the major sticking point is going to be. It's cool to see we can make it to Lance at this level, but I would guess we need to level up a ton before we actually beat Lance. But let's see. All right, so we're going to go for Return, and it does over half to Gyarados, and it goes for Rain Dance. That's fine, but here's Dragonite level 47. And remember the 2% chance of all those Thunder Waves missing versus Claire? Well, they're not missing this time. We get hit with Hyper Beam afterwards, and now we're paralyzed. We're hit by another Hyper Beam. And I'm going to tell you right now, unless we're able to two-shot Dragonite with Return... And we actually have, I think, the Silk Scarf, the normal boosting item, which boosts it by 10%. We have that equipped right now. We're going to need to unequip that for a Paralysis Cure Berry. And I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But, yeah, this just, this is not looking good. I can't see how this is going to work. And we're not even making it past, oh, that's a Hyper Beam Mist. That's kind of nice. But we're not even making it past the first two Dragonite. And losing is kind of bad, by the way because right now it's fine, but if we get past level 77, if we lose, it takes off a ton of friendship, and that would weaken return. So we need to think about that. Right now, we're still good. It's only 26 levels for Gyarados, its weakest Pokemon, but yeah, definitely something to keep in mind, and without a 2 -a KO, this is definitely not going to work. Paralysis Cure Berry barely really helps at all, because we're still relying on multiple 25% chances to miss which isn't good. So we're going to have to level up and we're going to have to come back. And this might take a while. So we battled every other trainer that I had somehow forgotten about. And we're at level 74. Now at Lance again. Gyarados, same thing. And remember, now it's that 30 level gap, at least for Gyarados. Now it looks like we're getting into that 2 AKO territory, but you notice I forgot the Paralysis Cure Berry. And that's a big problem. And we actually don't 2 AKO Dragonite. Which means, even with Silk Scarf, it's a range at this level, meaning we're probably going to have to level up a little bit more. I will try a few more times just to see if it's possible, but the odds are this is not going to work without a little bit more leveling up, maybe one or two more levels, which is going to take quite a bit of time, but we're not even really making it to Charizard, Aerodactyl, or the final Dragonite. We're still struggling to get fast Dragonite number two. Okay, so I leveled up a little more. Just beat the Elite Four again. You can see I'm level 76 now. We one-shot Gyarados with a crit. That's fine. But here's the question. It's not a two-shot. And you can see I still don't have Paralysis. Oh, it is. But we got a favorable range. This time, Dragonite number two goes for Blizzard. But you can see Return with a crit didn't one-shot. Which is fine. It means this is probably not going to be the battle. And yeah, Aerodactyl just knocks me out. Well, good news. First time we've seen Aerodactyl. Bad news, we didn't even get to see how much Dynamic Punch would do. So, yeah, I would say that's kind of a mixed news situation, but I'm happy. I'm happy we finally did it. I'm just going to lose this battle, and I have to lose to Dragonite or, well, actually, just anything other than Gyarados, and then battle the Elite Four again and come back at a level higher, hopefully. So we've done just that. We're back at Lance. Here is Gyarados. We go for Return, Rain Dance. It seems to do that every time, and I go for Shadow Ball. So we're at level 78, meaning losing to Dragonite would be quite bad. 
We get that Thunder Wave miss. Things are looking good. Second Dragonite, we do enough. And unfortunately, I did forget the Paralysis Cure Berry. That's my bad. But hopefully we at least get... Ooh, ah, fully paralyzed. No! Oh, I wanted to see how much it would do to Aerodactyl. Okay, so I need to equip the Paralysis Cure Berry. I don't want to because I like that I'm finally knocking it out in two hits. But I think we need to. Hopefully the 10% isn't making a big difference. You can see I opted not to do that here. It's also curious how much Shadow Ball would do. But this is so bad. Now, Thunder Wave, yeah, it hits. So, I mean, it's either try for a 7% chance of two consecutive Thunder Wave misses or level up a little bit more that we will two-shot even with the Paralysis Cure Berry. All right, well, I decided to see what would happen if I equipped the Paralysis Cure Berry. Would we do enough? It doesn't seem to be making much of a difference to Gyarados, so I think the 10% really isn't mattering all that much. Now against the first Dragonite, yeah, this could still be a 2 KO. Now, unfortunately, what I really need to have happen is one miss with Thunder Wave. So I do need to reset there, but if I get one miss with Thunder Wave or I get a crit, then I will be definitely not paralyzed for the rest of Lance's Pokemon, and I think we have a chance. It's a little annoying to have to rely on luck like this, but considering using physical Abra, I'll take it. So, Rain Dance, we know what's coming. All right. Do we get that miss we need? Yes. Yes, we do. We're not paralyzed heading to Dragonite number two. And we did enough. Another miss. Oh my god. We didn't even need the paralysis gear berry. I go for Shadow Ball. It's doing half. We get a crit against us. That's a little annoying. And now here's Charizard. I go for return. Wing attacks. We have 51 HP remaining. We're at level 79. Here is the final Dragonite. We're doing half. But because of that crit by Aerodactyl, Hyper Beam, we cannot tank. So I think we need that, but no crit from Aerodactyl. Can we do it? Hopefully. I think we're going to beat this at level 79, which is insane. Unfortunately, there's another process. All right, we're just going to have to keep doing this again and again and again. Eventually, this will work out. All right, here's another attempt. Return. We get Rain Dance. Shadow Ball. Perfect. Can we get the miss or the crit? Miss or a crit? Miss or a crit? There's miss. Knockout Dragonite number one. Here's Dragonite number two. Here's return. That's fine. I forgot to equip the Paralysis Cure Berry. This is the problem. I forget to save. Ugh. All right, now I've saved. So every time I reset, I will have the Paralysis Cure Berry. We already know the fight starts. It's the exact same way every single time. Okay. We need a miss. We don't get it. Theoretically, we can get a miss on the second Dragonite, but normally I like to reset. This time I don't. And I'm rewarded with a second miss. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to go for Dynamic Punch, and I miss. So the reason I thought Dynamic Punch would work is if Aerodactyl hits itself in Confusion, then we would have more than enough HP for Charizard and Dragonite number three. Right now, we have enough for Charizard but not Dragonite number three, unless we get a crit, which we don't. And it goes for Outrage, which actually will do much less damage because we have way higher special defense than regular defense. But yeah, I think Dynamic Punch will once again be clutch. All right, we've been at this for quite a while. We reset a lot because of Paralysis. I almost wish this Gyarados came out second because the big question, oh, we got a crit and a miss. <laughs> Well, that's the range there. We did not knock it out even with the crit, and we get a second miss. And a high roll, so we actually knock out Dragonite. This time I go for Shadow Ball. I got a crit. I got a crit. We're gonna win. We're gonna win! We're gonna win! This is it! This is it! We're gonna win! I go for return. It's gonna be three out. Safeguard! We're gonna win! 100% we're gonna win! Outrage does nothing! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! I, if I had pressed, oh my god, if I'd forgotten to press B there, I would have been so upset because finally we have beaten the Elite Four with physical Abra and we weren't even at level 80. That's awesome! Now we have to go through Kanto and because the video was getting long, I figure just maybe a quick montage of me defeating all the gym leaders would suffice. I mean, I went in Kanto order this time, which is pretty cool. And 
But yeah, really quickly, I guess Brock is kind of interesting because we have to rely on Dynamic Punch. But the one thing you'll notice, and this is kind of a spoiler for a little later, is we have leftovers from Snorlax. And that is huge because Abra takes so long to knock things out, we end up going with Shadow Ball. But even though Shadow Ball is a physical move and not super effective, it's still two-shotting because I'm over double the level of these Pokemon. And you can see I switched to Dynamic Punch and we can just speed this up. All right, now that we've defeated Brock, we face Misty. Misty, I'm just gonna go for Return. Technically, we can go for Dynamic Punch against Lapras if we wanna show off, but Misty's Pokemon mostly use special moves, so they're not really too big a deal. Surge might be a little bit of a problem because of Magneton. I don't know if Return would one shot, and if we get paralyzed, maybe in theory we could lose, even though we're more than double the level. Anyway, we just hit with Dynamic Punch and very quickly take out the rest of Surge's Pokemon. Erika, nothing really different or interesting happening here. No matter how many Pokemon you have, Janine is always hilariously underleveled, so we are very, very quickly gonna defeat her Pokemon. I don't know why they're so underleveled. For Sabrina this time, we do actually have Shadow Ball, making her, in a way, even easier, but I'm at a much higher level, so obviously that's going to affect how much damage we do. With Blaine, we're getting to Pokemon, we're not reliably one-shotting anymore, or coming all that close to one-shotting, but it still doesn't matter. This is why Leftovers is so great, we regain what little HP we lose, and so we make it to the only difficult gym leader in Kanto, Blue. We're pretty overleveled, but I still think losing is a distinct possibility. So against Pidgeot, I go for return. It doesn't one-shot, but because the AI doesn't have a high friendship value, its mere move return does nothing. Kind of a cool little thing that just happened there. I didn't actually know that would work that way. I was worried return would do a ton of damage. Anyway, next comes out Alakazam. Shadow Ball, we outspeed, we one-shot. We're double its level. Right on, I go for Dynamic Punch and miss. It goes for Sandstorm, which deals one-eighth not 116, then it hits with Earthquake, so I'm only at 93 HP. Dynamic Punch does knock it out, but only because we got a crit. And now here comes Gyarados. Lance's Gyarados like to go for Rain Dance. This Gyarados goes for Hyper Beam. And as I told you, losing was a distinct possibility. And indeed, we lost. So let's just do that again. We go for Return. It goes for Wing Attack that does way more than Return and we knock it out, but with leftovers, we're already pretty much at full HP, and after we knock out Alakazam, we will be at full HP for Rhydon. Shadow Ball is going to do very little to Rhydon. We do it with Dynamic Punch, but it doesn't hit itself in confusion. This time it goes for Fury Attack, and look how little Shadow Ball did. Look how little it did. This is why we could not have gone for it. We do knock it out, but there is a Sandstorm Raging. It will hit Gyarados as well, but I'm bracing for Hyper Beam. I get Rain Dance. Okay, that's great, because I didn't want Sandstorm. Executor, we still have Hidden Power Bug, and it's still useful, specifically for Executor. Our Canine does have Extreme Speed, it goes for it, but because we're at so high level, and with Leftovers, we have more than enough HP to spare, and at level 91, we're going to make it to Red. This is going to be unbelievably difficult. We have a bunch of Pokemon, no type coverage, we're going to have to rely on a ghost move, a normal move, and a fighting move that hits 50-50. I actually think this might be where the run ends. Well, the run's going to end here one way or another, but there's a real chance this could be a loss. And if it is, hey, I'm proud of Abra for doing this well without special moves. But can we take this run over the finish line? Let's find out. All right. Red leads with Pikachu. Hopefully this one shots. It doesn't. Thunder hits, that's not the biggest deal, especially after a full restore, although that crit actually hurts me, because we're pretty much going to be at full HP for Espeon. Shadow Ball doesn't knock it out, but this time when it goes for Reflect, it's a huge deal because I'm using only physical moves. I go for Curse because that will buff my attack and defense for Snorlax, but I don't know if we'll outspeed other things. So we hit with Dynamic Punch and we crit, which is great. Snorlax goes for Amnesia. I go for Return, but with Reflect, it isn't enough to knock out Snorlax. Thankfully, it does hit itself in Confusion and knock itself out, so we've made it to Charizard. But, big question, we don't outspeed. With Curse, it's going to be a 2-hit KO, but we have to outspeed. 
We're only at 47, now 61 HP. We do have Speed Blastoise. I go for Dynamic Punch, but Surf knocks me out. I don't think Curse is going to be a viable option here, but I do have some ideas. Critting Pikachu is good, but really, we just need no Reflect. Ah, we got Reflect. I'm thinking of resetting, but I'm just going to see how this goes. How much do we do with Reflect? Well, we miss, and this is another problem. Body Slam does over half, and if we miss, and after Reflect, yeah. We need Reflect not to be used. We, we just need that. It's not going to work otherwise. We have now seven levels of Wiggle Room. I used my two rare candies that I found in Kanto. Unfortunately, while Pikachu is a 1 KO, Espeon still isn't, but thankfully it goes for Psychic. Dynamic Punch does hit Snorlax, and it's doing half, which is great. Amnesia is perfect, and we knock it out at full HP. This is what we want. This might be it. We go for Return. It's a 3 KO. Oh my... Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? What's that, like a 10% burn chance? Well, that's so annoying because hitting with two consecutive dynamic punches is not easy. Thankfully, it seems like Snorlax... Oh, and yeah, this. Pikachu likes to go for charm, so I have to reset again and again and again because we can't be hit by charm. Again, like all status moves, 25% chance it misses, but we really want thunder and no paralysis. We want to make it back to Charizard. I think if we do, we have this. So, return. Ah, it's just not helping me, these ranges. But the full restore is good. No crit, so we will be pretty much at full HP for Espeon. So we go for Shadow Ball. You can see it's still not knocking it out. Psychic is fine. If we get the luck I'm hoping for versus Snorlax, it won't matter. Dynamic Punch hits. That's the first thing. Does it hit itself in Confusion? That's okay. Amnesia, we miss. Body Slam, that's not great, but 100 HP. All right, hits itself in Confusion. Come on. Uh, let's go for Dynamic Punch. Let's go. Okay, so we have 128 HP. I go for Dynamic Punch because I want Charizard not to do that. Uh, uh, what am I going to do? Do I have to level up? Is there a better strategy? You know what? I have an idea. Give me a second. All right. What if we had more HP? And you know what a great way to get HP is? Protect. Because we can use it every other turn, and we don't need Curse. I think this might be a way to gain enough HP to make Charizard doable. Of course, we need good luck elsewhere. Charm misses. Okay, that's great. I don't care about the full restore. And, oh, second full restore. That's fine. Rather Pikachu get it than the other Pokemon. Great. Okay. Espeon, no reflect, please. Crit, that works. No reflect. Now 50-50 chance to hit. We do get it. And Amnesia. I don't know why I stalled there. We got it. Okay, sorry. I'm just nervous. I want to do this. Full HP for Charizard. Return, no burn. I'm going to go for Protect here. You can see now I'm at 180 HP. Return, it's going to be a 4 KO. Flamethrower, 118. Protect. Now we're at 132. Return. Oh, we knock it out in three hits. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for Protect. Rain Dance. No, no. I go for Dynamic Punch. Please don't hit me with Surf. Yes, it hits Stubbing Confusion. Okay, okay, okay. Go for Protect. Stall out the Rain Dance. Hits Stubbing Confusion again. That's fine. 188, we have enough. Return. Oh my god, three consecutive hits at Selving Infusions. I think we got this. Venusaur likes to go for Sunny Day. I'm just going to go for Return. There it goes. I'm going to go for Return. It's going to go for Solar Beam. We did this. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yes! <laughs> Seven levels to spare. We did it. We beat Crystal with Physical Moves Abra. I'm done. Abra Champion. Never doing this again totally doing this again in emerald that's going to be awful this video has been a lot longer than i anticipated thank you for watching what essentially was two videos combined into one really entertaining really fun run this is the most fun i've had in a really long time i'm really happy with how this went and trust me next run is going to be somehow even worse i've already started working on it you guys aren't ready but until then thank you for watching take care